And as usual, stay triggered. Pew pew pew. All right, welcome back, Brigadine fans, to Lucia. She is a knight in the United Islands of Morelva. Okay, before we get into this, I'm your host for SD Trigger. Please smash the like, please smash the sub, and uh, just stay subscribed. We're going to finish all the Brigadine stuff that there is in this game. And we are finishing the knight guide for Morelva characters with Lucia here. I don't think there's any other characters I missed. If there are, please let me know in the comments down below and I will readily get to that. Otherwise, we're going to be moving on to Mana Celestia Theocracy next. The bad guy group. All right. But right now we're on Lucia, and um, she is a, quite a strong, robust chick in this game. Um, let's check her out. Okay. So right off the bat, character growth, rune command, not that great. Just kind of, just kind of meh. She's a decent tank, so you can still put her in a battle. She has a C for rune growth, so character growth, not looking the greatest. But honestly, I don't really notice. I I don't know. I Maybe I have to play as royal guards or lancers more, but I really don't notice anything particularly bad about Lucia in comparison to the other Lancers and all that. I feel she does very well tank-wise. I've never... I don't know when I've really lost with her in battle, to be honest. So even though it doesn't look that amazing with those bottom stats, hit point-wise, 779. I promise you I'm not feeding her any potions. Uh, MP is 179 with that. Defense is 140. Agility is 79, although that's still in the 70s. It's almost 80s. I know she's level 24 and all that. Mobility is 5. I'd have to say she's a little... Even though it shows this, I'd have to say she's still a little better than average as far as a Royal Guard or Lancer or whatever it goes. She's still very reliable. So, does that mean that the Royal Guard class is OP? I don't know. You tell me what you think about it, but I think honestly, with the Royal Guard and the Lancer class for this game, it's substantially better than it was in Grand Edition. I think Grand Edition was just on the verge of being good. Just a couple characters like Haley and Adelicia, but I think in this game, they kind of pushed it up to the Paladin level, so it's just as reliable as Paladins now. So they're like, good. Now you can have a reliable female character frontline and just do fantastically well. So, all right, let's um, check out some stats and uh, talk about some other stuff, okay? So here we go. Basically, you get a lance. You get this symbol here is heavy armor. There is a light armor plating, and there's heavy armor. So this is a heavy armor breastplate that you can get, heavy helmet, and a ring. So you do get the parry skill in here, which basically means like Dinadan parry in the past, Grand Edition, or um, Knight parrying in the past. Basically, this is damage mitigation, really. 20% chance of parrying normal attacks and skills from a single enemy. When triggered, damage is reduced by 50%. Basically like a Lizard Guard shield block or something like that. Just block 50% of the damage. So you can put Lucia up against Rudo, and she could parry Rudo's Clean military rule. Just saying. Very much like the Paladin class, this is the female version of that, but with lances. So that's kind of what that does. Um, silence immunity. Um, not sure if that comes naturally, or if... I, honest to God, I don't remember where, where this came from. I don't know if this is from a different class I put her through, but... Oh, this is from a different class. This is, um, I think they're from the witch class, maybe. Or, no, oh, maybe this is from this class. We'll have to go into classes and look at that. Uh, counter damage up. Essentially, you get the Zemecha skill from Grand Edition, where you can counter damage more. So, essentially, Lancers are very, very good in front lines. It's kind of where they need to be. So, if they can constantly attack, they're always counterattacking 
20% more than their first normal attack. So counterattacks, on average, will always do more damage. So it's, you're better counterattacking than attacking, if you understand the math, math behind that, which I'm pretty sure you do. So essentially, um, we get these skills once we get to the final class here, which is uh, the Royal Guard. Royal Guard is the third tier class. Uh, Cold Thrust, 120 power, 11 accuracy, Grounded Sky, a little better ground than a little better sky. What this essentially means here is this, uh, this up and down essentially means that you can have a little better accuracy hitting ground than you can have hitting sky. Because trying to hit something that's flying is a little bit harder than something that's just right there on the ground, obviously. But that's how they played into the game as well. That's how they um, talk about that kind of stuff. That's the symbols that mean the thing, right? So anyways, <laughs> um, Deadly Rush here deals major damage to a single adjacent enemy unit, but it's a pre-move, so you have to do it when you wait for one turn. Then the next turn you can do it. It is up to 170 power, accuracy bonus plus 21, even more, plus two double blue dots. Uh, still the ground and sky thing still applies, but it does cost you 50 MP. So you have to know, if you want to pull off a really strong attack, it's going to cost you 50 MP, so you got to have some MP to do it. Okay? Kind of like going back to Legend of Forcina with the Aya Slash using MP. Kind of in that sense. Just think about it like that. It, it'll be easy to uh, remember that way. Now, Killing Slice. Look at this. Deals moderate damage to all units within one hex radius. So everybody around you. It's going to do 100, point, 100 uh, points of power to that damage. Is a pre-move. Is non-counterable. Nobody can counter you with this. Does not cost any MP. Now, what it means to say is if you put her in a front line and you let her get surrounded, yes, they are going to hit you. But you have extra, once you get up to this level, you have extra counterattack damage. And you can do Killing Slice for free without getting countered. So your initial move would be Killing Slice, doing this on everybody around you, and once they hit you, you get extra counter damage. So you're getting a free move to hit everybody, not get countered, and when they attack you, what I'm saying is you don't have to physically attack them because you can use this, not get attacked, save yourself some damage, and get a free hit. It's pretty nice, right? So that's pretty cool. But you remember, it'll hit everybody in a circle, everybody around you, so it'll hit your allies too. That's why if you're going to set up a, a line, like set up a line like here and here with some monsters, but don't put a monster right next to you. Just one space away and then keep her like about like here. And you'd have a pretty good radius of hitting everything around you. If guess something got behind you or something like that, it'd be a really, really good way to do it. Um, tell me how you try it out. I'd like to know. That's kind of how I do things. All right, so if you look down a Grand Wave, one of the best ones to do, a lot of people like it, but Deadly Rush is stronger. You can do Grand Wave without a pre-move, but Deadly Rush is still stronger. Uh, Grand Wave does have an extra element than Deadly Rush, but Deadly Rush is still stronger. <laughs> so if we have to look back and forth between these two. This does moderate damage to all units in a two hex straight line. So you can run up to people and just go blam. Hit the person in front and hit the person behind. It'll hit both of them and it'll have a 20% chance to inflict paralysis, which is pretty good. But, but, but it does cost 80 MP to do. So it is a little expensive. Um, got to be careful, got to know what you've got, if you got the MP to do it. Really just do the calculations in your head as far as like, you know, if you want to do that or not, okay? All right, I think I explained this. This is going to be a little, you'll have to think about this a little bit, but these two down here, as you see, Ground and Sky always hits them. Killing Slice always hits everything around you. Grand Wave will always hit two things right in front of you and a thing behind it. So these will always work and they do not have a counter, which are pretty good. Now you get Fallberg with this. Now, I forgot to say in the previous video with Sophie, 
If you want the strongest spell to do with a mage, you want to put Sophie through the Lancer class, get the Fallberg skill, get proficient with it, put her back to the Witch class, and then you have the most powerful spell for a Witch. And you're like, why didn't the Witches get Fallberg? I, I don't know why. But if you want the best spell for a Witch class, put Sophie, put a Witch through this Lancer class, through the, you know, to get the Fallberg skill, get proficient with it, change it back to the Witch class, and then you're going to have a spell with the power of 190, which is the most powerful um, witchy spell that you can get. Just saying. If you want it, you can do it. If you don't, don't, don't bother. I know it's a lot of cross-classing, but just saying, if you want the most powerful spell you can get, hit a single target, do it like that. Now, yes, it is still powerful with the Lancer class here, but um, it is a spell. Um, so with a Lancer class not having that great of intelligence, um, isn't going to do it as well as if you put her into the Witch class. So you could really play with things here and see what you want to do with this. I, I think they did this so they could force you to try different classes, different strange ways. So anyways, that's that's a spell you get with the Lancer class here. So there you go. Oh, there you go. So um, I'll clear this out and move forward. You get a resist spell, which has a very wide radius. This is a warding spell from Grand Edition. This is anti-magic. So it's kind of like protect, but magic instead. Uh, it's very cheap on cost, 49 MP, very, very cheap. Spell break, you might have to do this sometimes if you got put with a attack down or defense down or something like that. Um, or I mean, um, actually what I mean is uh, a weakness. If you got weakness on you, you kind of want to do that uh, with a spell break. This also stops Veil. Um, it says doesn't affect Veil, but in the past it seemed to kind of do that, I think. I don't know if they did updates, but uh, spell break will stop a spell. It'll stop positive spells, too. So if you want to take off a positive spell, which I don't know why you'd want to, but you can use this you know, spell for that. So essentially, that's Lucia here. Uh, those are the things you can do. And um, I'd still have to say she's a pretty decent tank. I can't really complain. Uh, you get a lot of good stuff here. You know, she's pretty powerful. And uh, so what is her background here? Lucia is a female. She's age 43. Captain of a small female only pirate ship. Men are forbid from setting foot on Lucia's ship. Wow. Uh, she has a reputation of being harsh on men and soft on women. On the battlefield, she leads the charge and breaches enemy lines herself, which earned her Stella's respect. Although she's rivals with the Hammets and other pirates, she sees the war as an excellent opportunity to obtain all the treasures of Renarizia it offers to accompany Stella to that end. So, uh, um, kind of a man hater, um, <laughs> or I don't know, but she, she just likes women apparently. Uh, but uh, uh, she's a pretty decent tank. You can use her in a field. Honestly, uh, when I'm playing, a lot of the times I'll put her with Yuki or I'll put her with Umamaro, and uh, have a pretty fun tanky, uh, you know, front line. So I think she's pretty reliable. But uh, let me know in the comments down below what you've been able to use her as. I know it says Preference Swamp, but she also does get benefits from ocean and lake and, and all that stuff. So whenever you look at swamp, water, whatever it is, anything liquid, they all get evasion bonuses on anything that is liquid. So I wouldn't worry too much about swamp, river, lakes, waters, oceans. It's all the same, really. Uh, it it's a little bit different at you know ten to fifteen percent sometimes, but it's still you get a you get a bonus of evasion and accuracy. So um, yeah, pretty decent. Um, that will do it for United Islands of Morelva. I can't think of another character in here. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the Manuslus at Theocracy, and we'll have a lot of fun with that. We're going to start with Bruto, <laughs> the most badass guy in the, this game. And probably the most bad guy in the game as well. 
Uh, so we'll start with that next time. But thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, put down a like, put down a sub, do all the things, help this channel grow. Let's get up there. Let's um, you know, start making waves. And uh, I'll see you in the next Brigandine Guide video. Thanks for hanging out.